Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the video I just released earlier this week featuring the avant-garde trios, David Burning set amp, caliber and turntable, that amazing home in Beverly Hills I visited this past weekend. This could be the music clips video that I talked about and a couple of housekeeping things to let you know how this is a little bit different than normal music clip videos. Well, first of all, let's get this out the way. Music clips, especially for a system like this on YouTube, is not going to give you a true replacement for being there. The scale, the dynamics, the volume we listen to, none of those strengths in the system will come through on the video per se. But if you are using very high-end headphones, and I can tell you, a lot of people like to poo-poo YouTube or cell phone recordings or whatnot. I can tell you, I was there. <laughs> The cell phones actually do capture a lot of value and things that I noticed live, but it depends on what you use to play it back. If you play it on your car stereo or on your speakers on your cell phone or earbuds that are cheap or even headphones that are cheap or even your system, it's going to give you totally different impressions of what the sound clips are like. Only when I use my Stax headphones do I get a lot of value from the music clips. But you, if you're used to my recordings on whatever device you're used to playing it, I think you're going to see and hear some things that really stood out to me in terms of the compressionless sound and even get a sense of the scale. But again, it's limited in there. But another reason I do these music clips is because when I visit a lot of these homes, I don't tell them what to play. I like to hear what they play. And I like to hear what their system was designed uh, in mind. And he has some great taste. You're going to hear for the first time a great opera. You're going to hear Kenny Burrell, Patricia Barber, Steely Dan. And this trio was a real find that he found, German trio. That was one of my favorite recordings I probably heard. But all of them highlight different strengths of the system. And uh, it's cool music on top of that. One other point to make before I get into it is that I also, I don't like to edit a lot of stuff. I like to give you authentic and raw footage. And what I did was I kept recording in between the songs as he was getting the albums ready because it was all analog. And one thing that was interesting is just general chatter with him about the system or about the music, I think was valuable to include in this video because it helps highlight when you hear us talking that this is not just a bragging rights audio file like I told you. I think you'll be able to hear for yourself hearing his voice. Now he's off camera, he's a private individual, uh, but you'll get a sense that this is not just a bragging rights uh, primitive audio file with fancy gear. He had a specific goal in mind, his knowledge of music, all these things showcase, are showcased in these little excerpts that I had in between the song. So I kept it in there for you guys and I make chapters like I'll, I'll call it discussion one, two, three in between the songs. So you can skip them if you don't want to hear that or if you want to just go straight to that. However you want to use this video for your enjoyment. Uh, I think it's all worthwhile, but you be the judge. Uh, enjoy guys. I'm with the in crowd. I go with the in crowd goes. I'm in with the in crowd. And I know what the in crowd knows. At a time of year, don't you hear? Dressing fine, making time. We breeze up and down the street. We get respect from the people we meet. Oh, they make a way, day or night. They know the in crowd is out of sight. Yeah, very good with the dynamic swings and the scale. Um, definitely have these dialed in much, much better than 
they bring these speakers to shows and put them in little hotel rooms and people really don't ever yeah. get to appreciate I, i've actually never heard them in a show, show. okay yeah you probably don't want to you don't be <laughs> you'll probably get really mad at them for even bringing them yeah. so this is a german trio yeah it's uh something i just stumbled on in you know record racks one great thing about going to the stores you learn about things and try it out quite a find uh of an lp i, know. I mean that's a <laughs> tremendous track for showcasing exactly what you know this system excels in so many areas but that realism and dynamic contrast is what very few systems can achieve um and a track like that on a lot of systems would make it crumble uh you'd get a lot of distortion compression you wouldn't be able to play it at that volume which is another impressive thing is that you're playing it at the volume that I think is perfect for the track. And that's what it would be in a club. It would yeah, be about that. exactly. If we were this far from the band, that's about how loud it would be. Yeah. So, you know, you have that next level audiophile sense of where to put the volume for the reference of the track, which is good. Um, but that was super impressive. And that's... Uh, oh, it's yeah, it's, yeah uh, that's a cool uh, that, album. That, that sax is a very kind of biting sound yeah on the wrong and system it, it can sound really grating and yeah when i had the old system you know i got it to a pretty good point mm -hmm. but not to this point yeah and, and it always sounded a little too harsh yeah and here if, it's like liquid but biting but real you know because it's it is a harsher instrument in real life but not where it makes and you chase out the room harshly yeah but, he's he's yeah there that was a yeah a tremendous example of what your system can do that a lot of others can't do Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Kenny Pearl. Yeah, I really like him. But I don't. This is a Japanese. Uh, this is a Japanese issue of a Concord record. I have the Concord. This this actually okay. change. I'm I'm all about original records. Yeah, they always sound better. Mm -hmm. This was made when the tape was still fresh. It was made when Concord put out the record. Okay, this, great. Yeah, let's hear that. Really yeah.
you've got them coming in your house every day. <laughs> That's really nice. Did you hear that stupid warfare? Yeah, I guess um, it's about to go out, I think. I'm going to turn it off and see if it reset. Yeah, those, those, I'm having the same problem with my Route 25. It's starting to sputter a little bit. Well, you know, it's a flagship product. It's only three years old. Yeah, mine's less than it too. They, they really shouldn't. Um, actually, the first one, that one came dead. Oh, it did? Yeah. It didn't power up at all. Yeah, it's, it's frustrating. Um, I mean, the old rails, I've had rails for 20 years now. And I actually had a pair of studios at one time. I should have kept those. Yeah. Uh, it, it, those things were built like battleships. And, yeah, and different time and place, yeah. But the modern, the new rails, you know, while they perform, you know, when they're working, they paint. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think they're built to the same standard as the old ones. Yeah, I just, that's why I'm doing my own. I'm doing passive uh, with an outboard amp. Just a cool. And this, I don't know if you're familiar with the ring cycle. Mm-mm. So the, it's the... Uh, Four opera series that uh, Wagner composed and, uh, over a 20-year period. And some people argue probably the greatest accomplishment of Western civilization. Really? An individual person putting in that much time to create something basically revolutionary. Awesome. And a revolutionized opera. Okay. But the first time it was recorded in its entirety was this time, in 1958 to 65 spread it over a period of time. Okay. And to this day, consider the greatest recording ever made. So over seven years. Seven years, they, you know, they would, each set, each opera would take, you know, a couple months. Okay. And then there'd be a pause and then. Interesting. Come back and do it again. But still, it's considered to this day the greatest recording ever made. Wow, okay. It's, when you hear it, you'll say, how the hell did they do that? Okay, cool, Everything yeah. came together. All right, well, exciting, yeah. To give it another second or two. Yeah, it'll warm up the uh, that sub. But they've issued this now something like twenty-five or thirty times. Hmm. Uh, it's never been out of print, and actually, uh, at the fiftieth anniversary, or whatever, of the conductor's death, they issued it again. And uh, so that that was issued in twenty twenty-two, I guess. Cool. So that's just one of the records from one of the sets. But I have many, many versions of this. So okay. This is the version and the recording that is universally regarded as the one to get. Uh, so are there a lot of live opera performances here in LA you can go to? Unfortunately, not a lot. Uh, they had they play seven, they do seven operas a year. Okay. And we're members of the opera okay. council. And okay. Cool. Pretty much fanatics. The venue's really good here? It's not that great. It's, okay. It's okay. Okay. And the, and the companies, they're okay. Okay. They're not like the Metropolitan Opera. Okay. Um, and actually, I decided that, you know, I've won, they did a ring cycle uh, about, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago here. And it was a miserably terrible production. It was a new production, which they paid a lot of money to have done, and almost bankrupted the company. Hmm. Because nobody was going to rent it. After, you know, it was just so bad. You make... You make you break even by other companies saying we'd like to license and use your your production, and nobody wanted it. But we're going actually. I'm really excited about it. I'm going to have to start listening to these like very seriously. To uh, Berlin, the end of March, early April, for a, a cycle. Oh, is that right? Okay. Cycle. Okay. Because I decided, I don't know, a few months ago, we got to find a place that's doing a cycle somewhere in the world. And uh, that and probably got a great somewhere. venue there. Yeah. And apparently, it's a really good one. That's really, yeah. what I've heard. Cool. So yeah. we're pretty excited. Berlin, I've never been there. But I know Munich has an audiophile show um, yeah, in May. Yeah, which I've never been. I, I yeah. really want to do that. I'm going this year, so yeah, you should go. It just um, looks like such a fun time. You know? It is, and it's probably the biggest in the world. It so is, you get to yeah. see equipment you don't see in North America because... A lot of those companies, it's too much to bring the stuff to. They haven't even touched the North American market. But also, CES is kind of done. Yeah, they don't do anything anymore. Uh, those, there was one million dollar system that Macintosh and Sonus Faber did, but other than that, not much. Expona is kind of the biggest one now. 
Yeah, I had never, never been to it. That's uh, in Schaumburg near Chicago. And then I'm going to one next month in Tampa. Then there's one first time ever in Dallas in March. So yeah, that one expo. here, it's not, it's okay. Yeah, the V Home Entertainment yeah. one. Yeah, in Orange that County. Is, uh, yeah, the Orange County. Yeah, I it's a little small. Yeah, you can do it all in a day. You know. Yeah. But you know what's great about it, though? A lot of records for sale. Oh, yeah, the vendors, yeah. yeah. And JR's That's is usually there, go. yeah.
impressive. Um, just the dynamics and the recording itself. Isn't that um, amazing? Yes. Uh, and you get a lot of spatial cues in that recording, however they omni mic it or whatever they did. Quite impressive. Well, they invented the Deca tree, as they call the, it. The tree. It was kind created of, okay. by this. Recording. Okay. Yeah, I could tell. They, they placed them. They moved them. The idea, they called it Sonic Stage. That okay. was the name they came up with. They wanted it to be like you were at the performance. So yeah. there were spots marked all over the stage, and they would walk around as they were singing. They would move in the... To do, yeah, yeah you could kind of tell when the person... Yeah. yeah. It's very uh, innovative recording. And again... It's not the stereotypical audiophile track because opera is just normally, you, if you go to a show, you almost never hear it. Uh, but this is a great test of a system because so many systems would fail on yeah. many metrics. And, and like you said yourself, you've had to graduate over the time. Well, these amps helped a huge a amount. Big, uh, yeah. Because the hearing it with a, when there's a huge amount going on, it all just congealed mm -hmm. into one right. pile of stuff. Compressed and here and you very, can tell, you can hear all the things that are happening. Yeah, and, like a real life. And yeah. you, you feel like you are part of that microphone capturing it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a very impressive recording, but also obviously impressive system and the dynamics that you're able to get, um, you know, to suit your taste and your volume level. This is like, yeah, you're, you've got to be in heaven with this kind of yeah, I'm, setup. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. I tell you, it's, the funny thing is that as, as the system goes, I feel like, Good sound, good life. Yes. You know, it's, it's like if, if, if I have bad sound, it's like yeah, you're, bad you're mood. Bad mood, exactly. And like <laughs> if you have a good sound and you feel good, it just rewards yourself for all the money you spend in the hobby, number one, but also just in general, you have a better yeah. uh, day. This is my sanity room. Yeah. yeah. It, it allows you, your mind, to be less myopic on whatever going on and more like peaceful. So yeah, that's what a lot of people overlook about the hobby. Um, that benefit because whatever resonates with you, I mean, obviously, some people like opera, some like they'll even do it with rap or whatever. Whatever it does that gets you in that mood is what's important. So, you've, you've definitely got this dialed in perfect. Well, I could play you just a few minutes of one thing that just really gets you the full okay. treatment. All right, Steely Dan, of course. Is... Yeah, and Steely Dan is a little more contemporary for the audiophile community that yeah. they're familiar yeah. with. I mean, to me, it's all about music. I'm trying to get it to where I can just really, really enjoy the music. Mm -hmm. At this point, I don't have anything left to do, frankly. I don't know what else. To, there isn't anything else I can think of. Yeah, I mean, inevitably, you'll try different things, but yeah, it's not like well, you're, it's you're lacking. Stuff, like at Cartridge, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I mean, I stuck with 10 years with the platform, the speaker platform. Mm -hmm. uh, and dynamics are so important. And music like that, if you don't get the dynamics, it's not worth playing the music. No, exactly. So the, the problem with horns is is taming them mm -hmm. because you know they can they set can them up right and run out of the room. And that's unfortunately at the show conditions. Um, that's what they give yeah. people the wrong impression. This one was just a few, I wouldn't mind if it was like three more feet back. Mm -hmm. A little bit more back, but. The room in Encino was too big. It was 35 feet, and it was hardwood floor. Mm -hmm. I put all the treatments in, but not much absorption. And it was just, it was hard to tame the room. Well, this couch is great, too. It doesn't bring the backs too high where you're going to have well, reflections. It was, it was okay. Great. Okay, cool. <laughs> to have the back low. Yeah. Have it three seats, not uh, not four, because it, four is somebody's on the crack of a yes, right. cushion. Yeah. And I the sweet the spot, same yeah. size so that you could, that could but a sweet them. spot, yeah, yeah. And then actually, even though the boundary is close with this records, records the actually is the equivalent of actually probably much bigger, yeah. uh, room in terms of dynamic of sound, how it propagates against that yeah. versus I mean, I, a hard I wall. Had these further into the room, but uh, oh, you did last okay. time when JR was here, we moved them back, okay, including the woofers. That was fun. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a lot of the work. The gardeners were here the day we did it, so I had the gardeners come in there and help. Because, yeah, that's a pretty <laughs> hefty... What do those things weigh about? They're about 220, 230 pounds a piece. Wow. So, okay, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want to be moving that myself, yeah. But there's going to be one more time when we do the curtain, but that'll, that'll be it. But I'll have to carefully mark everything because it's... You want to keep that. a lot of time. We've got yeah. these things exactly set up. And really, you know, like he says, uh, putting those EVPs under the subs um, may help. But, you know, 
you could feel a little bit of the base in your feet yeah. going into the floor, but it's not it's not like storing it, you know, in a very like a second floor room may have more of a yeah. trampoline now effect. This, this uh, that recording we played, you heard there was a lot of deep resonance. Mm -hmm. they, they recorded this in a, in a place in Vienna. Okay. Uh, that was designed as a giant bathhouse in the early 1800s. It didn't really work out. You know, mm -hmm. Nobody really was interested in that in okay. Vienna. So they covered over the whole, you know, uh, I guess, basin or whatever it was, mm -hmm. with, the, with the floor, and they turned it into a dance hall. Mm -hmm. So it was no, there's no spec, there's no seats or anything. And it turned out to be a phenomenal recording venue, and that little warmth you get from underneath is what adds that Interesting. drama to the sound. So the Vienna Philharmonic recorded all of their stuff in that same venue. In that place called it was called the Sophie Saal. Started at the bathhouse. So started okay. at the bathhouse. Because, you know, <laughs> they can play this on their own system and realize they don't have that same dynamic contrast and the lack of compression. And it sorts out everything. There's yeah. so much going on in, the, in these in their stuff. It's yeah, and, and usually, even on a lesser quality system, that quality of recording showcases it. But when you hear it on this level, it's just that next le nth level of detail and dynamics. And it's supposed to, this is designed to be played loud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't. I know like you're at the concert. I would play that later speakers. at the end of yeah. the night because I know I have to recover for a little while. Yeah, but it's very impressive. So, yeah, thank you so much for letting us hear this. Um.